Meet our think tank. They've answered hundreds of general knowledge questions before the show. Their answers are in, but how helpful will they be to the three contestants? Playing the game are Lisa, a medical secretary from Ustrid Munich, Michelle, an employment consultant from Hemel Hempstead, and Adam, a quantity surveyor from Bradford. This is Think Tank. Welcome to the show. Welcome, as ever, to our Think Tank, who, it's fair to say, are extremely good with their hands, with skills ranging from dressmaking to DIY, 10-pin bowling to computer building. But will their knowledge prove handy <laughs> for our three <laughs> contestants? <laughs> Welcome to you three. Lovely to see you. Lisa, you are a medical secretary. You work in the diabetes and endocrinology department. I do, yes. That's a very specialist business, isn't it? It is. You haven't always been a medical secretary, of course. What were you doing no, before? No, I was in the Royal Navy. Uh-huh. And I was a Wren writer, and I was called Combat Barbie. Because? <laughs> I was five foot and size three combat boots. Oh, <laughs> you're conjuring up an image for me there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you're in the TA. Changed to the reservists now. I'm also five foot as well. Oh, oh. see? What a club. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and what are you not going to be so good at? Oh, football. Football. Don't okay. get that. I'm Welsh. I can't help it. Football. Yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, football. Oh, gosh. Um, I'm not entirely sure who's going to be able to help you here on that. No, nor are they. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you with us. Uh, Michelle, uh, you help job seekers back into employment, don't you? I do indeed, yes. I try to. Mm -hmm. And when you're not doing that, what do you do? Um, I'm a witch, so I study Wicca, so I, I do that. Are you a good witch? Very good witch. I think anyone who is truly a witch would never practice anything dark or spooky. That's not the way of the witch at all. Uh, does that have anything to do with the colour of your hair, the fact that you're a lovely witch? Do you like it? Oh, super. <laughs> <laughs> Look good on you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> Diane actually likes to play with hair and, and wigs and that sort of thing, don't you, I Diane? I do, I do. So some days I'm a redhead, some days I'm a brunette, some days I'm blonde, so my husband never knows which one's coming down the stairs and <laughs> keeps him on his toes. <laughs> <laughs> what an exciting life it is. <laughs> Michelle, good to have you with us. Uh, Adam, you work on building sites. Yeah, I'm a uh, quantity surveyor. When you're not at work, what do you get up to? Um, spend a lot of time um, playing football, going to the gym, and spending time with my uh, three-year-old son, Archie. OK. Well, football... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, football, no, still no help. OK. <laughs> all right, well, welcome to all three of you. Over three rounds, then, our contestants will try to tap into the knowledge of the think tank to build up as much money as possible. The two highest scorers then progress to the final. Ultimately, though, of course, just one will walk away with a cash prize. So, let's play the first round. So, in this round, I'm going to ask you a question and then every member of the think tank will reveal the answer that they gave before the show. The correct answer is always going to be in there somewhere, but there will also be any number of mistakes in the mix as well. So, pick out the right one, £200 will be added to your prize fund. You get two questions each. Lisa, you're up first. OK. So, here's the question we asked the think tank. In the name of the internet abbreviation, the letters NSFW stand for not safe for what? Ooh. Have a think about that, and let's see what the think tank says. Peter. Watching. Word. Wearing. Work. Watching. Watching. Women. Work. So, Lisa, are you familiar with this acronym? Not really, no. So, I'm just trying to work it through. Mm. <laughs> Internet. So, you... You look at the internet, mm -hmm. don't wear the internet. Mm. Perhaps watching is the best thing. So, not safe for watching. Well, it's certainly got more choices than any other. Yeah. Think tank. So, you're going to go for watching? I'm going to go for watching, yes. All right. So, in the name of the internet abbreviation, the letters NSFW stand for not safe for... You're saying watching. watching. What is it? Work. Oh. Oh. Not safe for work. Oh, dear. Diana Max, well done. NSFW is what you put as the subject of an email that you send to people so they know it's got stuff in it that you shouldn't be looking at at work. What that could possibly be, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I've never done that. 
Max, where do you find that? Oh, I've no idea. I've never ever looked at <laughs> right. anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not safe for work? OK. So, no money for you there, okay. Lisa, but you've got lots of time, lots okay. of other chances. So, let's come to Michelle. Your first question. You've seen how it works. Let's have a look. What is the name of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's second child born in 2015? You're looking confident. Don't answer just yet, because we might get the think tank to put you off. You never know. Saint. Jade. North. Saint. North. Saint. South. Saint. So half of the think tank going with Saint, almost half of the think tank going with points of the compass. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What's leaping out of you? You did look confident earlier. Yeah, I am confident. Um, I know that North was the first child. And I know that Saint was the child born last year. Saint is what you're going with. I'm going for Saint, please. That's the name of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's second child born in 2015. Let's have a look. Saint Yay. is right. Well done. <laughs> well done. So £200 to you, Michelle. And Adam, let's see what your first question is. Heston Blumenthal's Fat Duck, once named the world's best restaurant, is located where? Have a think about that while we see what the think tank thought. Wensleydale. Bournemouth. Brighton. Teddington. Ilkley. St Ives. Bray. Brighton. So two for Brighton and otherwise it's spread <laughs> all over the place. Got any thoughts, Adam? No. No idea. I knew, I knew the first two questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, that doesn't this, work. Yeah, I'm gonna go for, as a guest, Teddington. Any particular reason? I remember reading about it a long time ago, but it's, it's since gone, so Teddington. OK. I guess. So, following Max's advice here, you're going to go for Teddington as the location of Heston Blumenthal's Fat Duck, once named the world's best restaurant. Is that where it is? Let's see. It's in oh. Bray. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Armanel got it right. Bray on the Thames, Teddington's on the Thames, but that's all they have in common. Armanel, have you been for a meal there? No, I haven't, but I do know someone who did go and she said that she didn't like the snail porridge and things she didn't like, like that. Snail so porridge? I decided I didn't need to go. <laughs> yeah, you should have gone for the bacon and egg ice cream. Oh. Similarly. <laughs> I just thought, well, that's going to be easier on my pocket. Yeah. Not okay. Going. All right, so no money for you there in your prize fund, but you've still got some way to go. Lisa, you're next for your second question. Which sportsman announced in his autobiography, Open, that he had worn a wig for much of his career? Hmm. Let's see what the think tank thought. Wayne Rooney. Chris Akabusi. Seve Ballesteros. John McEnroe. Shane Warne. Andre Agassi. Jack Nicklaus. Frank Maloney, now Kelly. OK, so you've got a whole range to choose from. Well, I'm thinking open. Golf could be a, a link. Now, Seve, he had a nice mop of hair, didn't he? And Jack Nicholas, he, uh, he was quite blonde. So it's between the two. Mm -hmm. it's got to, I'm going to have to go with Seve Ballesteros. Seve Ballesteros, yes, you think? Yes, he had a lovely bump at mop of hair. OK, you think Seve's the sportsman who announced in his autobiography Open that he had worn a wig for much yes. of his career? Let's see if you're down to fair way with that one. It's oh! Andre Agassi. Oh! Does he have open tennis tournaments as well as open golf tournaments? Oh! Of course. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. So, Lucy. Yes. You had that one. He wrote that he lost the final of the French Open because he was worried about his wig falling off. Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> Yeah. I heard the same, and, and you know, yeah. what a shame. Yeah. Not an issue that you'd ever have, Cleve, I don't think. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Although, actually, this is a wig. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Lisa, I'm afraid oh. uh, you uh, oh. don't get any money for that one, and we move on to Michelle and her next question. The British cartoonist Norman Thelwell was best known for his drawings of which animals? So think of your cartoons and your cartoonists, while Peter gets us off with what the think tag came up with. Elephants. Horses. Dogs. Cats. Pigs. Horses. Horses. Dogs. Do you know any of the work of Norman Thelwell at all? 
absolutely no idea. <laughs> um, however, seeing as this is a stab in the dark and there is a majority going towards horses and also Arm and L looks seriously brainy. <laughs> 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 She does look seriously brilliant. Appearances can be deceptive, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. And so does Lucy and also Lenny. Um, I am going to go with them and I'm going to go with horses, please. So you're going to go with horses. The British cartoonist Norman Thurwell, best known for his drawings of which animals? Let's see if you're right. You are indeed. Horses is the correct answer. So you're using the think tank very well because you've got two answers right. So well done. £200 to you. And, Adam, we come to your second question. Which character has been played by Richard Attenborough, Nick Frost, Tim Allen and Paul Giamatti? Have a think about that while we see what the think tank thought. Father Christmas. Jack the Ripper. George Washington. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. Sherlock Holmes. So, pretty sizable majority going for <laughs> Father Christmas, Adam. I had an idea before because Tim Allen was in the Santa Claus, I think, and Richard Attenborough did Miracle on 34th Street, I think. So, I'll guess, or guess I'll um, say Father Christmas. Father Christmas. So, you had a pretty good idea, you yeah. think, before that, and then five eighths of the think tank agreeing <laughs> with you. Confirmed. That yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they're right. <laughs> of course, yeah, but, but Jack the Ripper, I don't think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> On there. But... OK. <laughs> All right, so you say Father Christmas has been played by Richard Attenborough, Nick Frost, Tim Allen and Paul Giamatti. Let's have a look. And you're absolutely yeah. right, Father Christmas is the answer. <laughs> Richard Attenborough was indeed in Miracle on 34th Street. Nick Frost played Father Christmas in Doctor Who. Tim Allen was, as you mentioned, in The Santa Claus. And Paul Giamatti was in Fred Claus. So well done. £200 to you. <laughs> So, at the end of the first round, let's take a look at the prize funds. And currently, Lisa has yet to get off the mark. <laughs> Adam is on £200. And in the lead at the moment is Michelle with £400. <laughs> so, don't worry. It could all change in the next round. Every member of the think tank is holding <laughs> two questions which they answered correctly before the show. You will take it in turns, then, to pick someone in the think tank whose knowledge you think you can match. And for every correct answer, another £200 will be added to your prize fund. Once a think tank has asked both of their questions, they can't be picked again, OK? Lisa, you get to go first. You have all of them to choose from. Who do you want to go with? Max. Max, our English literature graduate. Happy to help you, Lisa. Thank well, you. Well, I have a confession to make that when I was growing up, I was obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Absolutely adored it. And I dragged my parents every weekend to the local steam railway. So hopefully... You share my passion for small uh, trains. <laughs> <laughs> and you can answer this question. The Thomas the Tank Engine books are largely set on which fictional island? So, are you familiar with Thomas the Tank Engine? Yes, I've got an 11-year-old son. And he... I've got Thomas the Tank Engine track everywhere when he was little. I can, I can hear Ringo Starr in my head. Read, because oh. he did the voiceover, he did the voice for the videos, on the, didn't on he? The, yes. Yeah, on the cartoons. Well, no. Something like Thordor, Thordor, Saw, something like that. Thor. Thordor. You're going to go with Thordor? Yes, that's all I can think of, Reed. Thomas Tank and your book's largely set on a fictional island called Thordor is your answer. Max? Well, it's a magical land where dreams come true, and it's called Sodor. Oh! oh so close. Sodor, so, so close. So close. So close. I saw it. Oh. oh. What a pity. So, shame, no money on that question. OK. Michelle, you're up next. For the time being, you still have everyone to choose from. Who do you want to go with? I'm going to go with Lucy. Going to go with Lucy, OK. I really like uh, the Radio 4 programme, The Infinite Monkey Cage, and I love Stargazing Live. Uh, it's a question relating to Professor Brian Cox, so hopefully you might know the answer to this. The scientist Professor Brian Cox was once the keyboard player for which chart-topping band? The scientist Professor Brian Cox once the keyboard player for which chart-topping British band? You are looking very happy. I know this one, Bill. You do? <laughs> I do. Really? OK. It's d -ream. D Ream is your answer to the chart topping British band. <laughs> Brian Cox played keyboards for. Is it a D Ream answer? 
<laughs> He's a dream kind of guy. You're right. Well done. <laughs> Oh, and, no. of course, one of their big hits was Things Can, can Only Get, get better. better. Can they? No. <laughs> <laughs> so £200 gets added to your fund, Michelle. Well done. Adam, you are next, and you can still choose from any one of these fine thinkers. <laughs> <laughs> a Yorkshire man to a Yorkshire man. I'm going to go with Cleve. Our musician, Cleve. I think you'll be really pleased you did. Because <laughs> um, what I didn't confess to earlier is I'm, I'm actually a huge sports fan in general, and uh, I heard you say you enjoy... Certain sports. So um, the question is, which English football club won the European Cup in 1977, 1978, 1981, 1984, and 2005? So glad I picked you. <laughs> <laughs> That's made it so much easier. It's Liverpool. So you're saying Liverpool yes. managed to win the European Cup five times? Is he right, Cleve? Yes. Can we go in there? From one Yorkshireman to another. Thank you very much. Liverpool FC, you'll never walk alone as long as you stick with Cleve yeah. for questions on sport. So, well done. £200 into your prize fund. Lisa, oh dear. we come to you. No, you come on, keep your spirits Fancy up. for once? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You've got tons of time to make up, so don't you worry about it. OK. OK. Who do you want to choose for the next question? Len. Our retired engineer, Len. Help me. <laughs> no, you'll be OK with this one. I'm sure you will. It's authors. Right. Like this author, I read a number of his books, and he's my favourite author, he is. Ian Rankin, his Rebus novels are usually set in which city? Ian Rankin's Rebus novels, usually set in which city? Have you read much of the Rankin novels? These Rebus? not novels, they have been dramatised, haven't they, on TV? And aren't they Scottish? Glasgow. You're going to say Glasgow? I'm going to say Glasgow. Going with Glasgow is the city in which Ian Rankin's Rebus novels are usually set. Is it Glasgow, Len? My country, wrong city, Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, oh dear, Lisa, not having any luck at all, I'm afraid. I'm not. Hang in there, hang in there. I'm trying. Michelle, we come to <laughs> you, and you can still choose whoever you like. I will choose Cleve this time. Please. Going to choose Cleve? Yes. Please. All right. He did well for Adam earlier. He did. The question is, which singer? Born in 1911, was known as the Queen of Gospel. Which singer born in 1911 was known as the Queen of Gospel? A gospel singer, I would assume it's going to be one of these great Motowny type of artists. So, and I'm, I don't know the answer, I'm going to say Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin is your answer for the question which singer born in 1911 was known as the Queen of Gospel? So, Cleve, is Michelle right? Was it Aretha Franklin? I'm so sorry, it wasn't Aretha Franklin, it was Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson. Of course, Aretha Franklin has sung a lot of gospel, but Mahalia Jackson was the original Queen of Gospel. So, nothing added to your prize fund there for the time being. And Adam, we come to you. I think I will go for Abby. So, I'm, I'm a doctor, and this question is related to medicine. Oh. Um, and also, my mother had it, so that's why I know it. Rubella is another name for which disease? <laughs> I, I want to say measles, but I don't think that's right. But I can't think of anything else. So, I'm going to say measles. So Adam says measles is another name for rubella as a disease. Abby? I said German measles. German measles is yeah. uh, the other name for rubella. And measles and German measles are actually two different diseases. So I'm afraid, Adam, that uh, is incorrect. Oh. And you don't get to uh, advance your prize fund anymore. Of course, Abby, you're a doctor, so you'd yeah. be bound to know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we would hope. OK, good. Lisa, we come to you next. You wanted that question being a medical secretary. You I had it. One. You so had it. I've had the injection. Let's, let's see. <laughs> let's see if we can get a question to suit you oh, this time. Um, Abby. I'm hoping you know it. Um, which news presenter, born in Trinidad, was awarded a knighthood in 1999 for his services to journalism? Which news presenter, born in Trinidad, was awarded a knighthood in 1999 for his services to journalism, Lisa? Sir Trevor... Oh, what's his second name? You can see him. He's there. <laughs> Sir Trevor... Davis. So Trevor Davis is your answer. 
as the news presenter born in Trinidad awarded a knighthood in 1999 for his services to journalism. Abby, is it Sir Trevor Davis? Sir Trevor MacDonald. Oh! oh. Yes. <laughs> Kicking yourself there. Lisa, sadly... Again? Still not off the mark. And you, you, I know you had that answer. Hang in there. We come to Michelle for the next question. You can't choose Cleve or Abby, but you've got six other members to choose from. So I think I'm going to go with Diane this time. Okay. All right. A fellow pen pusher. Our retired HR advisor, Diane. I travel to Spain every year. My husband and I, we go to a reggae festival, and I decided to start learning this language. What is the Spanish word for tomorrow? What is the Spanish word for tomorrow? Mañana, mañana. <laughs> mañana. Mañana. Is your please. answer? The one. That's the Spanish <laughs> word for tomorrow. Is that the right one? See. Si. Yes, it's <laughs> mañana. Oh, well done. Yeah. Gracias. Oh, we're getting all lingual now. OK. Si, si hablo un poco español. Ah, oh, muy bien. Well done, Michelle, you get another £200. And... <laughs> Adam, we come to you for your next question. I think I will go for Peter. Hi, Adam. Well, I'm part-time in the reserves, as I said earlier. Uh, this is uh, related to ranks. OK, the question is, in the British <laughs> Army, soldiers with which rank wear two stripes on their arms? In the British Army, soldiers with which rank wear two stripes on their arm? You got any military experience at all, Adam? Soft hands, no. these. I've never been outside, never done anything like that. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lisa's desperate to answer that before you. Oh, She's oh, to be in the Navy. I'm gonna... I'm gonna look silly and say sergeant. You're going to say sergeant? Yeah. As the soldiers who wear two stripes on their arm in the British Army. Yeah. Peter? Sadly, that's the wrong answer. It's a corporal. A sergeant wears three stripes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Sergeant has three stripes. It's the corporal who has two stripes. <laughs> so no money for Adam there, I'm afraid. And at the end of that round, let's see how your prize funds have changed. So, Lisa, you still to get off the mark, I'm afraid. Uh, Adam is on £400 in the lead, though. Michelle with <gasps> £800. So, contestants, one of you shortly will have to leave the game, but there's one last chance to take lead. And, Lisa, you can still catch up, OK? All of you are now going to be asked the same question. Two members of the think tank will then give you the answer that they gave before the show and why they think that they're correct. Only one of them is going to be right, though, OK? So, if you side with the correct person, you get £200 added to your prize fund. Just five questions remaining before we have to say goodbye to one of you. So, do... Choose your answers carefully, OK? First, then, we're going to hear from Peter and Diane. And here's the question. Who has played James Bond in the most official Bond films? Peter, film's your big thing, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen a lot of Bond films, and I would say it's Sean Connery, because he's been in quite a lot of the films in the early ones. And Diane? I believe it's Roger Moore. And, you know, Sean Connery didn't do that many. It was Roger Moore. He was the one that they felt was... The Bond. All right, then. Roger Moore or Sean Connery. Contestants, please lock in your answers. Well, uh, two of you have gone with Sean Connery and Michelle in the middle. You're on your own with Roger Moore. Let's see if you're right. It is indeed <laughs> Roger Moore. <laughs> Roger Moore starred in seven official Bond films. Sean Connery starred in six, but there was one unofficial one that he <gasps> was in. Oh, yeah. Almost a draw. Never say never again. <laughs> but actually, that wasn't, as they call it, an official right, Bond film. Okay. So, Diane, well done to you. Thank you. Well done well to done. you. Thank you. And that means, Michelle, you add another £200 oh my to your Well done, fund. you. <laughs> I did. And for our next question, we hear answers from Armanel and Max. Here's the question. An apiarist is someone who keeps which creatures? Armanel. Well, I did some Latin at school, and I believe that apis is the Latin for bee, and that apiculture is beekeeping. So I think an apiarist is somebody who keeps bees. Hmm. All right. Max? Well, I also did Latin at school, but I probably don't remember it as well as you do, Armin. <laughs> oh, thank you, Max. I <laughs> went through a slightly more English route and went apiarist. Sounds a bit like an ape. Uh, so, better to go for a catch-all term and say monkeys are the creatures that an apiarist keeps. OK, you have a choice then between monkeys and bees. Please lock in your answers. 
and all three of you have gone with B. So let's see if you're <laughs> buzzing with the right answer. <laughs> you are indeed B. Well done. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> and well done, Armanel. Thank Good you. Stuff. Well done. And it means that you all get to add two hundred pounds to your prize fund. Lisa, congratulations! Yay! You are off the mark. It's the start of something big, I know. <laughs> okay. So, our next think tankers that we're going to hear from are Cleve and Peter. Here's your question. Who once described a proposed extension to the National Gallery as a monstrous carbuncle on the face of a much-loved and elegant friend? Monstrous carbuncle. Who could have said such a thing, Cleve? There are very few people, I think, who can honestly make that kind of statement and use that kind of language. And the person that came straight away to my mind and why I wrote it was Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry, OK. Peter? I think it's Prince Charles, because he always makes some outrageous statements sometimes. And, and this really... is one of his, you reckon? Yes. OK. So it's Prince Charles or Stephen Fry that you have to choose from contestants. Please lock in your answers. So Lisa has gone with Prince Charles, Michelle and Adam with Stephen Fry. One of you, at least, has got to be right. It's Lisa again. Prince Charles is the correct answer. So Prince Charles uh, said this at a dinner to mark the 150th anniversary of the Royal Institute of British Architects. So it wasn't just something controversial to say, Peter. It was a pretty controversial place to say it as well. So well done you for getting the answer right. Thank you. Thank you. And, Lisa, this means you get another £200. So you're Whoa. flying. You are indeed. For our next question, we hear answers from Lucy and Abby. And here it is. What was the profession of Harry Hill before he became a comedian? Very funny guy, Lucy. I believe he did something very sensible in stark contrast to his comedic things now that he does. So I thought it was accountancy that he did. So I believe he was an accountant. He was an accountant, mm -hmm. maybe. Abby, what do you think? I went with my own profession, because I think I've seen him on an interview and I think he was a doctor. So he was Dr Harry Hill, was yeah. he? All right, so he was either that or he was an accountant. Contestants, please lock in your answers. All three of you have gone with doctor. Very confident you are there. Let's see if you're right. He was indeed Dr. Yeah. Harry Hill. <laughs> That'd be a good choice on your part. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. And it means that you all get to add £200 to your prize fund. For our final question, then, in this round, we're going to hear answers from Len and Diane. Here it is. The platypus is native to which continent? Len. Australia. No, the reason I'm saying that is because I've been there. I've been in the zoos and all. I've never seen him in the wild, but I've actually seen him in the zoo in Australia. OK. Diane? OK, well, I've also been to Australia and I saw a platypus in a zoo, but they come from South America. And they're actually called duck-billed platypus. OK. She says comes from South America. South America. Then says Australia. Contestants, please lock in your answers. Two of you have gone with Australia. Michelle is the odd one out, possibly, with South America. Could still be right. Let's have a look. Australia it is. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, Len, very good memory from what you saw in the zoo. So, well done, you. And it means that Lisa and Adam get to add £200 to your prize fund. But you have now run out of time to boost your kitty, so it's time to take a look at your totals. In the lead is Michelle with £1,400. Followed by Adam with £1,000 and trailing behind with £800 is Lisa. So, sadly, we have to say goodbye to you. Thanks very much Thank you. for playing the game with us. And I thought you were very brave to keep trying away. So, well done to you. Thank you. Well done, Michelle and Adam. You two will now compete against each other to take home the money that you've earned so far in the final. <laughs> Well, Michelle, have you had any thoughts about what you might do if you win with the money? Uh, yeah, I'd like to take my daughter, Amelia, away on a nice little holiday. OK, how old is she? She's eight and gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> OK, Adam? Similar. Um, take my dad and uh, Archie probably to Spain or somewhere where, where it's nice and the beer's cold. All right, OK, so you've both got travel plans. It'll come true for one of you. Good luck to you both in the final. It's a general knowledge battle. I'm going to ask you five questions each. And whoever gives the most correct answers will then take home the money that they've built up so far. Fortunately, the Think Tank 
is still on hand here to help you out. <laughs> you can pick someone to consult with before you answer the questions. Each member, though, can only be picked once. And the difference in the final compared to the rest of the show is that they haven't actually seen any of these questions before. So they are in the dark just as much as you are this time, OK? So, Michelle, you built up the most money during the main game, so the final will start with you, OK? Here's your first question. London Calling and Bank Robber were UK hit singles for which band? So it's a pop question. Who do you want to choose from Think Tank to help you with? It's going to be Cleve. This would be a calculated guess, to be honest with you, Michelle. Just... Have you any thoughts, any ideas? I can hear the song in my head, London Calling... Da, 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 da. Maybe, like, The Clash or something. Oddly enough, I was going to go for the jam, um, only because I thought I could hear Paul Weller's voice in my head somehow. Oh, man. The Clash and the jam, like... It's too close to call, isn't it? I wish I could be certain, and genuinely I can't be certain, but my calculated guess would be the jam. That would be my... That would be my you have to go with what you think, though, is the right answer. I actually think Cleve's right. I think it is the jam. When we last we've been discussing it, it's popped out to me more. Mm. So hopefully. So you're going to go with the jam. Going to go with the jam. Okay. London Calling and Bank Robber UK hit singles for which band you say is the jam? Let's see if it is. It's the oh. Clash. Oh. Is the Clash? Oh, Your really first man. instinct was right, Michelle. I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> so no score for you just no. yet. Okay. Adam. We come to you for your first question. Here it is. Which actor, who's gone on to have a Hollywood career, played the role of Mike Young on Neighbours in the 1980s? I will ask uh, Diane. I'm going to ask Diane. OK. Right. Um, there's a name in my head. He was opposite Kylie Minogue, and I can't... Jason Donovan. Yeah, but I'm not sure if he played Mike. I was, I was thinking either Donovan or Russell Crowe, because he was on something like that, but I'm not sure if he was on Home and Away. If you're more certain with your answer, I would go with that. Because it's a Hollywood there's... career. The Hollywood career bit, mm. it's not Donovan. I don't think he's no. on anything in Hollywood. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'd stick with that. So you're going to go with... Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe is your answer for the actor who's gone on to have a Hollywood career, having played the role of Mike Young on Neighbours in the 19... 19... 80s. You say Russell Crowe. Let's see if you're right. It's Guy Pearce. Oh. I'm afraid. Russell Crowe was indeed in Neighbours, but he played Kenny Larkin. Right. So, sadly, you're not off the mark either, so you're still level. Michelle, here's your second question. In which country was Pope Francis born? Pope Francis. You have six members of the think tank to consult. Arminel, please. Arminel. Huh, well, I do have an idea here. I don't know. Do you have any idea? Not a clue. OK, OK, so you're, you're going to have to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Pope, Pope Francis, is, that's the most recent Pope, yes, right? Yes, it is. Okay. And, and he's South American. Yeah. And I think it's Argentina. I'm going to go with what Arminel says. I'm going to go Pope for right. Argentina. Argentina is your answer. In which country was Pope Francis born? Let's find out. Argentina yeah. is the correct answer. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah, you chose the right person there, absolutely. <laughs> Armin, you can be relied on time and again. <laughs> well, oh, and some of you, the rest of you as well. <laughs> All right, don't get jealous, it's OK. <laughs> All right, Adam, you are one nil behind, but this is your chance to even things up, OK? Here's your question. Who was the British Prime Minister at the start of World War II? Who do you think can help you out on this one? I will ask Max. Let's see if we can put you uh, level pegging with Michelle. Now, it's not Winston Churchill, because he was elected during the war, but what was the name you were going to go for here? <sighs> it's the guy who came back with a letter piece in our time, but I can't think of what his name a is. A piece of paper. Yeah. Now, my first instinct here was Neville Chamberlain. Yeah, that's it. That's the, the one, one we're going to go for, do we think? We'll have that one, yeah. Well, you've got to that idea together, so you... Neville Chamberlain's the yes, one you want to go with? Go for that one, yeah. As the British Prime Minister at the start of World War II. Let's have a look. Neville Chamberlain it is. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. He resigned in 1940, and then Winston Churchill did take over. So well done to you. OK, Michelle, here's your third question. Which Belgian city is often referred to as the Venice of the North? Bit of a geographical question there. 
you've still got half of the think tank to choose from. I am going to go with uh, Lucy. I think I might know this, actually. Um, I travelled uh, to Belgium earlier in the year. What city were you thinking of? I've, something's just coming to my head now. I was originally going to say Brussels, but I've just thought Bruges. Bruges, that's where I travelled to. And it, it, it did remind me of Venice. Yeah, I totally get that. And I'm going to go for Bru Bruges, please. Having heard of only one Belgian city before you started, <laughs> you've now heard of two. Well, it popped into my head because of, like, the, the Colin Farrell film, the, in Bruges, so... OK. In Bruges is what you're going for. In Bruges. The Belgian city often referred to as the Venice of the North. Let's see if you're right. You are indeed. Yay, well done. It's Bruges. Great collaborative effort. Well done, it you two. It worked well you together. Certainly I know. Did. It's been good. I'm loving Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Two one to Michelle, but uh, plenty of time for you to get back on level pegging, Adam. Here's your question. What is the first name of the detective played by Idris Elba in the TV series Luther? Have you watched it much? I've only started getting into it recently, mm -hmm. on the recent season. I... <sighs> well, you have Abby, Peter and Len to choose from. I'm going to go with Len, because it looks like you might know. Right, I've picked, you've picked a good one this time. You'll have never even seen the season. Oh, so. oh dear. <laughs> uh, you any ideas yourself? For some reason, Dave, but no, that's Dave. not right. I, I just can't get Dave out of my head. So where, so where is the series based? Is it based in London or is it based...? It's based in London, I think. Maybe like a Cockney name or something like that? Try and give us some information to sort of... Spark something up there? I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess at Martin. I can't honestly think of what his first name is. You're gonna go with Martin? I'll go with Martin instead of Dave, yeah. OK. Martin's your answer for the first name with the detective played by Idris Elba in the TV series Luther. Let's see if you're right. Oh. It's John Luther. <laughs> there is a very famous Martin Luther, of that course, was the <laughs> Protestant reformer. Yeah. A few centuries back, and there was Martin Luther King, but this was John Luther, was what we were looking for. So it's two on to Michelle. <laughs> And we move on to our fourth question. And here it is. Mary, Queen of Scots, was executed during the reign of which English monarch? Oh, you're nodding your head, so you're looking confident. Yeah. You'll need someone to back you up here. So it's Abby and Peter to choose from. Uh, I'm going to go with Abby, although I have a good idea of, of the answer. <laughs> I'm such a scientist. I dropped history, I think, in year eight. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no That's idea. I would say... Possibly Victoria, but that's a complete guess. Based on that, I hope you've got a strong idea of your own. <laughs> I have got a strong idea, because I really like the Tudor period of history. Um, it was Queen Elizabeth I, her cousin, in fact. Elizabeth I? Yes. You're saying was the English monarch during whose reign Mary, Queen of Scots, was executed? Let's have a look. Well done, Hi. indeed. Elizabeth I is the right you. answer. Mary, Queen of Scots, executed for, allegedly, plotting to take over the throne uh, from Queen Elizabeth. OK, so well done. That means it's 3-1 to you. Okay. Adam, 3-1 down. You have to get this answer right or Michelle will be the winner. OK? Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this question. Persia is an old-fashioned name for which modern-day country? And it's just Peter to help you out here. My first instinct was Iraq, but I don't think that's right. Uh, I think it's somewhere around that area, because remember the Prince of Persia, Persia films? It was very sandy. <laughs> um, I sometimes think Russia is somehow related to Persian Empire as well, but I'm not too sure. Hmm. So you've got Iraq, Iran... It's quite a, yeah, broad <laughs> spectrum, that, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's the whole Middle East somewhere. <laughs> I think I'll, I haven't got a clue, so I'll just go with Iran. Going to go with Iran? Yes. OK. Iran is your answer for the question. Persia is an old-fashioned name for which modern-day country? Let's see if you're right. This to stay in the game. And you're right. Iran. That's a great answer. Well done. That was a good bit of nudging Peter gave you there, because you started off in Iraq and he just yeah. brought you around via Russia, of all places. <laughs> and then back in. So, well done. That was good collaboration. Thank you very well much. done. Thank you. 3 2, the score. Michelle. Question is yours. This is the fifth question. If you get this one right, you will be the winner. There are no think tankers left, though, to help you, so you are on your own from here on in. OK? This to win it. Kenneth Branagh married which actress in 1989? I think the answer's Emma Thompson. Because? I remember them to be... They're, they're like, 
amazing lovies and she's brilliant and he's brilliant and going around their house for dinner must have been awesome. So <laughs> I just think I know it's Emma Thompson. That's what you've got in your mind, in Emma Thompson. In my head, that's what I've got, yeah, please. OK. And if you are correct, you'll have won £1,400, OK? Emma Thompson is your answer to the question, Kenneth Branagh married which actress in 1989? Let's see if you're right. It is the right answer. Oh, my God. Congratulations. You are the winner. Commiserations to Adam. You were very close, gave it a really good go, but I'm afraid you're not taking anything home apart from the joy of sharing the program <laughs> with these people here. Honestly, I get that every single time. Anyway, Adam, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Michelle. As our winner, you're definitely taking home the prize of £1,400. Oh, my goodness. And shortly you have the chance to add an extra £1,000 to your winnings. Right. Okay? OK? So, first, though, let's take a moment, shall we, to congratulate the think tanker who gave the most correct answers during the show. Who was it? Let's have a look. <laughs> it's a tie. Lucy oh, and Armin oh. Well done. Oh. OK, good work. Armanel particularly did very well. Oh, and Lucy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Honestly, it's like having kids in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Michelle, you have one last chance then, seriously, to boost your prize as you face our question impossible. Well, this is the toughest question of the whole show, of course, because no one in the think tank managed to get it right, OK? So if you can achieve what none of them here could and give us a correct answer, you will get an extra £1,000, OK? Let's take a look at your question, Impossible. In 2004, Margaret Thatcher's son was implicated in a plot to overthrow the government of which African nation? Now, just take a moment to think about that, and while you do that, we're going to give you a little bit of help because we're going to look at the answers that the think tank gave, which were all wrong, so that you can rule a few things out. OK? Let's see. So, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, Gabon, Kenya and Ghana are some of the wrong answers. I would have gone for Zimbabwe, actually, and the only one I can think of right now is Chad. So I'm going to go with Chad, because it's my instinct. Chad? Yes, but I don't know. You don't remember that story particularly, but you're going to go with Chad? Yes. OK, good luck. 2004, Margaret Thatcher's son implicated in a plot to overthrow the government of which African nation? You're saying it's Chad? Let's see if you're right. For an extra £1,000, Oh, it's Equatorial Guinea, I'm afraid. Yeah, difficult one, really difficult one for you there, I'm afraid. So, you didn't conquer the question, impossible, right. but you're still leaving with £1,400, so that'll take you on a nice holiday with Amelia. Oh, it's awesome, I can't wait. Good, so, feeling happy about that? I'm so happy. I'm ecstatic, actually. Oh, well, that's great. Getting it to the final, I thought, was amazing. <laughs> well, you did really, really well, Michelle, and thanks for being such a great contestant. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching. Do join us next time when three more contestants will see whether they can bank on the think tank. Until then, it's goodbye from them. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.